May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth on uh, this first day of 2023. So happy new year to you and also happy Christmas because we are still in the season of Christmas. It was just a week ago uh, that we were here on Christmas Day um, and now embark on a new year. 
Um, this is year A in the cycle of scripture and lectionary, which means we are hanging out in the Gospel of Matthew. And um, as you will soon hear, we don't enter lightly. Um, what happens when Jesus is born is that the world gets threatened, that there is a new king, a new power in town. And uh, we will hear just shortly um, how the world reacts to that, but also that God is still present. So uh, wherever you come today as you flip your calendar, know um, that God is in the midst of this world and in the midst of all that we um, encounter in this world, and that's why we worship and we gather here today. So I invite you, as you are able here at church, and for those online, a welcome to you as well, to stand as you are able as we begin with our call to worship. God of life, we gather today to hear the mystery and marvel of how you come into this world. Come into the lives of the poor, bringing hope into the lives of the powerful, bringing caution, into the lives of the weary, bringing rest, into the lives of the wise, bringing restlessness, and into our lives and longings, wherever our place. The light shines, the angels proclaim, the shepherds hear and go, a mother ponders, God's promise is born. Promise is news of great joy for all people. Amen. We continue as we sing together. pray together, gracious God, your presence is found in a manger in Bethlehem, where Jesus is humbly born into the depths of human night. May the promise of Emmanuel dwell in our hearts and guide us in the year ahead. Amen. morning. Reading today is from Matthew, second chapter. Now, after the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, 
for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw what he, what he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went away to the land of Israel. But then he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod. He was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Dan. You may be seated. Let's pray. God, here we are at the beginning of a new year, and um, there has been so many things that we have held over this last year, and we just take a moment now to remember those and name those personally and as a community and how we have been shaped by them, but your promise remains. You are with us always. And so as we embark on this new year, uh, we just take a breath and pause in this moment to trust that your spirit comes each and every time that your word is proclaimed. So send your spirit now into this moment, into the circumstances, into the now and not yet. Amen. So one of my daily um, spiritual practices is um, the Pray As You Go app on my phone. And as I listened to it uh, early this morning, it shared the scripture from the Old Testament, number six, chapter six, as the appointed reading for today. You know this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. It's a blessing that we often share at the end of the worship service. And as each day on this little app that I listen to with my AirPods, it shares a little context and then a reflection, and then it just gives time for quiet. And this app reminded me today that today is the World Day of Prayer for Peace. And so as this blessing speaks of everything which is promised to us from God, the app invited me to extend this blessing, not just to myself, but to the whole world. And I thought, what a way to start the beginning of a new year with a wide blessing of God to all the places and people of this world. But instead, you came to worship today and instead of this wide blessing in Numbers chapter 6, Matthew tells the story of the raw details of which Jesus is born. The incarnation happens, God takes on skin, but this does not magically take away the cruelty of unchecked human power, the grief we hear of the deaths of babies, and the fear embedded into this fragile, broken world. This story quickly smudges a clean whiteboard of a new year with ache and so many questions. 
But we also, as a community, commit this year to dwelling in Matthew's gospel for the long term, so there's no skipping the hard parts. And even begrudgingly, we trust that scripture as a living word will lay something at our feet or place a star in the sky, even for a moment, to light the way. I received an unusual and beautiful gift this year, a box filled with 12 individually wrapped gifts one for each of the 12 days of Christmas. So even as I pack the Christmas things away this week and as my vacuum is clogged with pine needles, and as I flip the calendar already to a new year, I still open a gift each day. And it's been an act of patience and restraint for me. I'm a middle kid. I love the instant gratification of a gift. I can't just watch it. I have to open it. And so it's so hard for me to wait. But I have heeded the process, and I look forward each morning knowing there is a gift that's still yet to be opened. And so maybe God in the midst of Matthew's gospel, will offer us the same, a gift for this day and for the days to come. And so here are a few nuggets for you to unwrap as we begin this new year. The first is Joseph. As I mentioned on Christmas Eve, Matthew is the only gospel writer who has invited us to hear about Joseph, so much so that we even get to enter Joseph's dreams. And this is what we know. He did actually sleep, even with a colicky baby. And in that time of unconsciousness, connected with the divine, And he listened, and he heeded what was spoken to him by God. He didn't overthink or do a T-chart. He acted and trusted that God's story was being written among the unfinished pages of this unexpected life that he was living. Joseph, who started his marriage in such a difficult way, who was not the biological father of Jesus, took on a call with this misshaped family. And even though the writing about Joseph ends here, there is so much to be noted. He created a family in a way that wasn't expected, adopting a son, providing and trusting with however much faith he had that God would act and continue to act. And he was a part of the story that was still being written. Joseph was open to God's next word and the stillness to receive it and the guts to obey it. I wonder about this in our overextended lives that we live. Where's the time for you for quiet? To simply receive divine love to watch and pay attention to God's presence, and to know that it will come. How can this sacred listening and this openness land in your life and land in the life of this church as we discern God's presence at Mount Olivet in the days and years to come? The second nugget here is Herod. Matthew paints a gruesome portrayal of Herod, so fearful of another's power that he would wipe the lives of innocent babies in order to keep his power. As much of a tyrant as he was, Herod was also a master builder and orchestrator of public work projects, including the reconstruction of the Jerusalem temple. So many lives were well kept under his jurisdiction. And so we can imagine that many probably could overlook this murderous tendency 
in order to keep the status quo? How do we affirm powers that keep economies running and taxes low and look away at the injustices that infest? How is the call to justice, to do justice and speak up for the oppressed, being enacted in each of us in what we say and do and decide each day? The third is the Magi. We can limit the story of the Magi as some additional characters in our nativity scene, but if we do, we miss then that there was a clear call to non-Jews in this story. Astrologers from other places being called to come to see with intuition and grit enough to make a long journey to come to religious material in scripture that wasn't their own so they could understand where this God was being born. To simply offer their presence and wonder. It wasn't fear that brought them to Jesus, it was wonder. Wonder of the divine entering this world, maybe in a way that they were not familiar to offer the gifts that they had and also to receive. You see, the Magi also receive a dream, not to go back to Herod, but head back in a different way, not to heed to worldly power in fear, but to trust in what God was doing and to see the presence of Jesus in this world, even as a baby. You see, even in these opening chapters and years of Jesus' life, the gospel is being extended to all people in faith. God being the connector, not the disruptor of all people. And the last is this. Even when you can't understand it or see it yourself, God is up to something and won't leave this world untouched. And Matthew, more than any other gospel, links Old Testament stories and prophecy to the fulfillment of those promises revealed in Jesus. Matthew wants us to see this meta-narrative of what God has enacted in history and still in daily life, but it's not always obvious. Even today, Joseph was told in a dream to go to Egypt to become a refugee in another country so he would not be under Herod's eye. Egypt is the place where God freed God's people and brought them back. Because even in this story, Jesus is linked to the story of the Exodus, to God saving God's people. There is so much more biblical knowledge in this story. And one can know scripture without recognizing Emmanuel. One of the really profound things I did in this in-between week was to do a lot of watching of Disney+. And so I watched the movie Finding Dory, Again, the Disney Pixar movie that is the follow-up to Finding Nemo. Dory, the royal blue tang fish, has short-term memory loss and gets estranged from her parents. And so she makes the adventure to go and find them. And so even in her memory loss, she has a, a dream or a remembrance of collecting shells when she was young. And in the collecting of shells, her parents teaching her to follow the shell, to make her way back by following shells if she forgets the way. Well, at the end of the movie, Dory finds herself in a kelp forest, not knowing where to go at the end of her rope on this adventure of trying to reconnect to her parents. But then she looks down and she sees a shell and then another. 
And then as viewers, we are given a wide shot of this little section of the ocean floor where her parents have laid out shells in every direction, working in this time that they were apart, putting shell next to shell in the hopes that she would find her way home. And she did. Whatever faith means for you in this new year, what is the present that you are meant to unwrap today? May the practice of faith not forget that Emmanuel embeds in the unexpected places and in your lives right now. So watch for it. Pay attention because God is there, the divine swirled within humanity. And if nothing else, be open to the next shell, leading us ahead in this new year. Amen. Please stand as we sing. Oh,
God's word is spoken and the story unfolds, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God be with you all. For those online, feel free to comment um, peace, and we will connect with you that way for us here at church to be able to greet each other with that peace as well. Be seated. We continue now um, with our offering. I have a basket up front. Kids, especially for your coins and your dollars, those go um, in all the work that we're doing um, to um, help with hunger in the world. And uh, for those of you that brought your envelopes, you're welcome to bring them up front. Uh, We also have a um, box in the back for that and our Venmo account if you're interested in giving online as we start this new year and advancing our mission and all we're doing, um, thank you for making that happen today and onward. So we continue now with our offering. Okay. 
We pray together now over our offerings. God of peace, your birth among us is good news of great joy for all people. Turn our hearts towards each other so that we might love our neighbors and share what we have with all those in need. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The Spirit gathers us together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What is the gift that is meant to be unwrapped in your life, a uh, living God who comes into this world to guide you ahead, for you to discern what the next step is in your life, in the call in which you are a part of, we each get to be a part of, and even today, in a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine, that next shell for us to make our way. And for a God that promises to act and be present in this world, that is the God we worship and we trust each and every day. If you are online, hear these words as you partake in communion wherever you are. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those at church, ushers will lead you ahead. Gluten-free cracker, wine is red, grape juice around the ring uh, is lighter. Uh, feel free to come up and pray if you would like as well. Please come forward now. The feast is prepared. December flowing. 
brings unending joy, brings the endless joy of our hope, highest hope, of our hope's bright dawning, sun being loved of heaven. Now the bud has come to bloom, and the world awakens. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We pray together. Humble God, you came into this world as a child in a manger, and you come to us again in ordinary bread and wine. Send us from this table with joy in our hearts, ready to live the good news that you are with us in all things. And so with um, this promise that God is with us, we speak. Um, even in the stillness, we open ourselves um, to what we are hearing, the needs of this world. And um, when we are able to pray, and oftentimes when we can speak that aloud, that prayer goes out and um, is given to this community that promises um, to walk alongside each of us in what we are experiencing, and a reminder that we're not alone and that God is working in this world, releasing that and trusting in God's presence. And so I invite us to do just that as we pray. If you're online, just feel free to type your prayers in the comments and we will pray those out loud here at church. And if you're here at church, just simply raise your hand 
in just a moment, I'll start us off as an opening as we pray. Uh, good and gracious God, um, an inhale and an exhale at the end of a year and the beginning of a new one. Always a reminder um, that we cannot know, but we are called in faith, maybe like Joseph, to trust in the next step and how you will speak or act and for us to trust in that. And um, that reminder that even in a broken world, uh, where grief and death and lives of innocence are impacted, that you come to save the world. So God, help us as we have our own forgetfulness in that divine presence that is here, that you come to save us each and every day. So hear now the prayers of your people, God in your mercy. Scott. Yeah, um, Gwen Denninger, our finance administrator, um, her husband Chuck went into cardiac arrest on Tuesday and is in ICU still, um, What is uh, was in an induced coma and is now uh, working his way out of sedation. Um, and so I have a hunch that Gwen is listening online. Gwen and Chuck are members at Lord of Life in Maple Grove, and so a vast community of prayers um, in this place and far and among for Chuck's recovery. And uh, for Gwen and their kids, Ryan and Ashley, uh, Gwen is the sister of Carla Berkeley and Joe Himmelberg here at Mount Olivet, so many connections. And um, God, each and every day for this awakening to the promise um, that you are in this world, and we just pray for Chuck's healing and for his recovery in this really fragile time. And so much love uh, to Gwen and the kids and um, that extended family as they wait and as we trust in faith. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Kathy. Was his name Glenn? Len? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, a tearful prayer today for the Kemp family um, for a brain tumor. Um, God, uh, for the fragileness of, of what a day can bring um, to change our lives. Um, and we pray for a deep sense of presence and healing. Um, for this family in this time of crisis, for the next thing, the unknown. Um, anchor their feet in the promise that you are close and love of a vast community coming from many different places for the exactness of your love um, to land. We pray, God, in your mercy. I read these prayers online. Rita, please pray for a relative with a mass on her brain and a friend with breast cancer, for peace in Ukraine and Syria in this world. Uh, God, we pray for Rita's relative, um, another tumor on the brain and a friend with breast cancer. Uh, for all the forces that enter our bodies, um, for science and wisdom and research and cures, and for how that is manifested in the complexity and also re the resiliencies of bodies, be with them as they make their way. We pray for healing, God, in your mercy. Allison Nahr, um, praying for my sister-in-law, mother and niece, who is five years old, and nephew, uh, 
um, eight years old, all diagnosed with COVID this week. Um, uh, just uh, for this virus uh, that keeps going, um, for rest and healing, uh, God, um, for health and concern for others. Allison, we pray for your family, for their healing, God, in your mercy. Yeah, JoLynn, uh, requesting prayers um, for your partner, Bob, who has uh, neurosurgery on Friday, January 6th. God, another brain tumor that we are praying for uh, this day. Uh, for surgery, JoLynn, for um, presence, for um, clarity in the midst of unknown. Um, Bob, we're holding you in our hearts and praying, God, in your mercy. And jo Joyce lends uh, prayers of thanks for the healing of infant Miller. He continues to improve at home following eight days of hospitalization uh, for the ongoing healing of this little baby for Miller. God, we pray for the nurturing, the care, the growth, the slow and steady progress of recovery. God, in your mercy. And Teresa, joining with you as you pray for continued prayers for your dad's Ron, for his healing, uh, for his ongoing recovery and stability. Uh, Teresa, we're holding your dad on our hearts as we pray. God, in your mercy. God, so much um, we have spoken today is so hard and unknown. And yet we come and we pray in the stillness. We listen for your voice. We obey and do what we can do to offer that hope and love in the world. Call us, God, into the places and to the people that we need to encounter, and may we receive the gifts of others as well. Amen. It's good to see you um, and to worship. I think those prayers have all changed us. Um, it always seems uh, like right when we feel that we may have life by the tail, something changes. This is the life, and this is the faith, and here's the promise that God is with us and all those things. Um, so as you make your way today, trust in the, pro the promise and presence of God Emmanuel and um, for all the ways that we can be bearers of that. Um, just one service today, and um, I come with some good news as we um, announce our progress at our open doors on paying off our mortgage. It was just a couple weeks ago that we had a remaining balance of 91000 and as of December 28th, that's only 51000 So um, I'm just taking a moment to celebrate that. Um, gift by gift, we're up to 154 of our households here at Mount Olivet that have felt called to contribute. And uh, we trust in the days ahead to get that news out to those uh, who have not yet responded and would like to. We keep trusting as we make our way. So um, maybe that is the gift that we open each week uh, to celebrate uh, this futuristic sense of where we're going with that. So a deep sense of thanks for your generosity, not only um, in open doors and paying off that mortgage and, and what's next for us as a church, but also just the daily things that happen as a community and this place where we all belong and uh, we lead forth with this promise that we are given. So um, I invite you now uh, to stand as we close and sing together the first Noel.
receive the good news of great joy, God's peace descending upon you, God's hope rising around you, and God's love dwelling within you. Be blessed by the God who is born into this world for you, Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is born. Thanks be to God. Thank you.